Hello and welcome to lesson 12.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be introducing the WOW block or the WOW statement in Alice. The WOW statement is one of my favorites. It's similar to some of the other stuff we've done. Um, similar to a loop, a WOW statement runs continuously. It runs the same block of code over and over. And it has a conditional check similar to what you saw in the if else statements. What makes a WOW statement unique is that it will run code consistently over and over and over again until the condition is found to be false. So in an if else statement, it does a conditional check and it finds out whether or not uh, it, an expression evaluates to true. And like you saw in the video, if it evaluates to true, it, it runs one block of code. And if it evaluates to false, it runs a second block of code. A while statement makes a similar check. It checks to see if something is true. And like while suggests, as long as that condition remains true, that while block will continue to run over and over and over again, and it will continue to run until the condition is no longer found to be true. The way we use this is sometimes we have an object walk forward until it is within a certain amount of distance from a second object, or you know, other applications like that. So it's a, it's a pretty powerful programming concept, You'll see there's a lot of similarities to that and the Alice loop, but let's go ahead and get started in looking at the Alice while loop. So here we are, I've got a fresh Alice world open, and to provide an example of kind of the beginnings of how the while statement works, let's go ahead and add an object. We're going to add an object from the vehicles gallery, so if you're not there already, head over to the vehicles gallery. And I'm going to pull the same helicopter out that I used in the previous animation. So let's see where that guy's at. Uh, here he is. So I'm going to position this uh, helicopter about halfway down the screen. Now, I'm going to have this while well statement work um, based on a variable that I create. Now, one thing you'll notice about this helicopter, it has a heliblade method here that you can run to turn the blades. You can ignore that right now. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different to turn the blades of this helicopter. Instead, I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to create a new variable. This variable is going to be a Boolean variable, meaning true or false, and we're going to call this engine on. And engine on, by default, will be set to true. So when this animation first starts running, we'll see that engine on is true. And just to show you that, let's right click on this, watch the variable, and hit play. So we have the helicopter sitting here. It's not doing anything, but the program knows that engine on is currently set to a value of true. Now I'm going to grab this while loop and drag it up here into my method window. And you'll see that I'm, I have to like the true false statement, or, or not the true false, like the if else statement. I need to set a, a starting value. So this is going to say while true. This is the exact same as saying loop infinity times. These two statements will do the exact same thing. While true will always evaluate to true, and in this case do nothing, or loop infinity times will loop infinity times, then do nothing. So let's delete this uh, loop command here. So instead of just running something forever, I'm going to only have this run while the helicopter engine is on. While helicopter engine on is equal to true, we're going to do something. Just like we did with the loops, I'm going to grab the helicopter's propeller, and I'm going to have the propeller turn to the right by one quarter revolution. And I'm going to do this over a duration of 0.1 seconds. This block right here will run as fast as it needs to. So right now, the, the code in this while loop takes 0.1 seconds to run. So it's going to run this block of code roughly 10 times per second. When I hit play now, you see the propellers are spinning. So I've got the propellers spinning correctly, and as long as this engine on is set to a value of true, the rotors will continue to spin. The, s the second I change this to false, you see the animation stops running. That's the really cool feature of the while loop. Looping something infinity times will never allow it to stop. 
if I were to instead take this loop and have the helicopter propeller loop infinity times, so let's go ahead and disable this. Once it starts spinning, there's nothing I can do to stop it. Even if I make this value false, it's already been instructed to run that code infinity times. I have no ability to turn on and off this, this rudder. However, when I use the while statement as opposed to an infinite loop, it's going to be based on the helicopter engine on variable. So this allows me to start with the engine running and then through the course of my program set this variable equal to false. To make this animation a little bit better, let's go ahead and move the back rotor, rotor as well. So the back rotor is going to turn. And I think this is going to turn forward. I'm not exactly sure, but we'll do the same quarter revolution over 0.1 seconds. And I'm going to put those in a do together loop so that they turn at the same time and hit play. There we go. So now I've got the, the two propellers are turning at a realistic speed. You might want to adjust that a little bit. So we have the beginnings of our animation and we're doing this with a while loop. As soon as that variable changes, both our rudders now will stop turning and the animation is done. The next thing that I'm going to do in this animation is create another variable. So go to your helicopter. I'm going to create a new variable and this will be a number variable. And I'm going to call this uh, height, maybe. This is going to represent how high I'm going to have the helicopter fly before it's kind of its max elevation. So for right now, I'm going to say the max height of this helicopter is going to be 10. And I know this to be meters because when I write this program, I'm going to make each increment of height be one meter. So I now know that the uh, height, maybe let's rename this. We're going to call this max height so that we recognize that this height right here is the highest our helicopter will fly. I'm also going to want a variable to keep track of the current height. I know the max height is 10, so let's create a variable and call it current height. That's going to be a number variable that is initialized to a value of zero. I'm going to use these two numbers compared to one another to help control this animation. So I know at the start of the animation, my current height is zero and my maximum height is 10. One important concept that you're going to want to keep in mind as we do this, uh, that we'll use a lot more in interactive programming, is you have to think of this while statement as running multiple times per second. This while statement is executing 10 times for every one second. That's how the propeller is rotating because this pe propeller is rotating a quarter revolution every 0.1 seconds. And since these are happening together, this whole block is taking 0.1 seconds. And the very instant this animation is done, it makes the while check again and constantly runs through this block of code. Since I know this is constantly running, I'm going to add a check to have the helicopter take off to our max height of 10. We're going to use some skills in this that we haven't introduced yet, but if you follow along, you should be okay. I'm going to use an if else block here, and I'm going to do an if else check in my do together loop and use a placeholder value of true. So each time through, not only is the propeller, propeller rotating, but it's also going to make a check. This if else block, much like the propellers, is going to execute 10 times per second. What I want to check is, is the current height less than, and then use expressions, max height? Is the current height number less than the max height number? Right now, 0 is less than 10, so this if statement would evaluate to true. And if this uh, if statement evaluates to true, this block right here that says do nothing will execute. Otherwise, this else statement will execute. If the current height is less than the max height, then I want the helicopter to move up. I'm going to do this by giving the helicopter a move command. I'm going to tell it to move up. Now here's where it gets tricky. I know this is going to run 10 times per second, so I have to have this animation really scale to be a 0.1 second animation. So I'm going to move the, the helicopter up 0.1 meters. And I'm going to do this over a duration of 0.1 seconds 
so that this animation speed matches the propeller and the rotors going. If this is too long, let's say we were to set this uh, to a value of you know, two seconds here, what you'll see happen is the rotor will spin and then stop and the helicopter will continue to move up because the helicopter rotor animation is not as long as the helicopter moving animation. So I need to make sure that all of these durations match my 0.1 seconds. Now some of the other things I need to remember is I also want the style of this to be abruptly to allow for a smooth animation. One thing that you're also going to want to check, go to your camera and properties and make sure that the vehicle of your camera is not set to world. Make sure that the vehicle is set to the helicopter, otherwise your helicopter will take off and your camera won't go along with it. So right now, we have the helicopter moving up 0.1 meters over 0.1 seconds abruptly while the propellers are rotating. And if we hit play, you can see the helicopter starts taking off. The bug we have in this program now is our helicopter really will take off and fly forever. This current height variable isn't being adjusted. Because it's not being adjusted, the current height will never be greater than the max height. So we're going to add some code to this if statement right here to allow for that. I'm going to click on the helicopter and find the current height variable. I'm going to drag that over beneath the helicopter moving up. Now when I look here, I can increment it by one or decrement it by one. That's not really going to help me here. Because each time I'm moving the helicopter up 0.1 meters, incrementing my variable by one is going to make the current height variable just grow way too fast. But there's a way for me to increment this variable by 0.1 instead of one. Use set value, and although it pulled off the screen here, find expressions on your list and select helicopter current height. You should now have a statement that says helicopter current height is set to helicopter current height. That means each time through, it'll take the current height of zero and set our variable to a value of zero. Essentially, we're still stuck at a, an elevation of zero or current height of zero. But I'm gonna use one of the Alice math commands to help adjust this variable by 0.1. On the little gray arrow next to helicopter current height, Use the pull down menu, and although it went off the screen here, find the math button, and then select current height plus. For now, let's just go ahead and put in a one. So now each time through this helicopter current height will get set to itself plus one. This is the same as incrementing our variable by one, and if we run this animation now, I should watch current height grow each time the loop runs. That's all well and good, but our current height got to 10 really quick. We really only went off the ground one meter. So instead of setting this to a current height of uh, itself plus one, we're gonna set it to itself plus 0.1. Now this variable will only increment by 0.1 meters or a value of 0.1 instead of one. When I watch this animation now, now run, current height will increment by 0.1 and that's more true to what I wanted. It's going to keep raising off the ground until it reaches maximum height. Once it hits maximum height, the helicopter stops gaining altitude. The reason it stops gaining altitude is now every time I execute this if check right here, current height is no longer less than max height. And if current height is not, if current height is less than max height, we're instructed to do nothing. I can now control this animation using my variables. I can set the max height to say five meters now instead of 10. And I'll see when my helicopter flies, it doesn't go quite as high, it goes half as high. Current height is still gonna increment at the same level, but when it gets to the max height, which is now five, the helicopter will stop gaining altitude. In fact, I can control this animation almost completely as far as elevation is concerned by adjusting max height. Current height will always start at a value of zero, and engine on will equal a value of true. 
Now I haven't done so in my code, but it is also possible for me to turn off my engine in flight by setting engine on to false. When that happens right there, see that my, en my helicopter stops flying altogether. In fact, we can get to about right eh, two meters or so, turn it off, change it to false, and we see that the helicopter stops gaining altitude. The reason for this is the second I turn the helicopter engine off, this entire while loop, which is running 10 times per second, stops, and it moves on to the next line of code, which of course isn't there. It's the end of the program. So this while loop will continually run, but the second this condition is found not to be true, it'll break the while loop and move on to the next block of code. In a nutshell, that's how the while loop in Alice works. Now there's a couple more examples with the while loop that I'd like to show you, but this video is starting to get a little bit long. There's not going to be a lesson 12.2 challenge program. That, um, that challenge program you'll be able to find in lesson 12.3 as we provide another example of how to use the while loop in your uh, programs. So this is kind of an unfinished program here, but it should give you an idea of how the while loop works. So I look forward to seeing everyone for lesson 12.3, which will be a continuation of while statements. As always, if you have any questions about this program or anything that you've seen in this series, uh, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to help you out and make sure that your programs are working okay. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the series and have a great day.